Well, good morning, everyone, and welcome to City Church. I'm Priscilla Williams, and on behalf of Dr. Chris Foster and the City Church family, you are in the right place. Happy Father's Day to those who are celebrating uh, Father's Day, whether you are uh, have biological children uh, or you've got children who've been brought into your care or you're mentoring someone, happy Father's Day. And so uh, on today, we just welcome each and every one of you. And we want you to know, men, you are going to learn how to get the honor and respect you desire, as well as how to tap into God's unique design for you. You will understand better why you fight the battles that rage inside of you, as well as receive the octagon to overcome, the courage to conquer, and the will to win as you learn how to become God's man. So join us as Dr. Foster takes us straight out of fatherhood today. And as you're here joining uh, before, get that cup of coffee, get that tablet, get that, uh, that pen so that you can get an on-time word today. And if you're joining us for, for the first time and want to share, why don't you click that like button and then that share button so that someone else will be able to hear the word of God. And I will be back with you after service. And, and so I want you to enjoy the service that's already begun. Enjoy the worship. for God the Father this morning. What do you say? Thank you, Lord. Stand with me, stand with me if you would. Let's praise the Lord. Sometimes on this journey, I get lost in my mistakes. What looks to me like weakness is a canvas for your strength. My story isn't over, my story's just begun. And failure won't define me, cause that's what my father does. No failure won't define me, cause that's what my father does. Father's house. 
prodigals come home, the helpless find home. Love is on the move yeah. when the father's in the room. Prison doors fling wide, the dead come to life. Love is on the move when the father's in the room. Miracles take place, the cynical find
and all to say sing my soul will sing my soul will make this place and all to make this make this place no matter how I'm feeling I will sing my soul will sing my soul praise yeah. amen anybody just glad to be in the house of the Lord this morning amen yes. no matter how the week has been amen we're just glad to be in his presence amen because there is refuge there is safety in his presence come on look at your neighbor say there's safety and there's refuge in his presence can we just lift up holy hands to the Father and put something on your lips in this moment? Lord, we thank you. If you got to thank you in your heart, you got to thank you on your lips. Come on, give it all to him this morning. Oh, even the fathers in the room, today is Father's Day, right? Even when you didn't see your way of providing, God stepped in for your family. Come on. Even when you didn't have enough money, God provided for you. He is an all-sufficient one. He is a provider. He is our Father. We love you, Jesus. We love you, Lord. We love you, God. Oh, we love you, Jesus. There is nobody like you, Jesus. There's nobody like you, God. Yeah. Come on, that's it, that's it. Come on, continue to worship him. Come on, in your own way. Come on, let's worship the Father in your own way. Because there's nobody like you, Jesus, Jesus. There's nobody like you, nowhere. There's nobody like you, nowhere. There's nobody like you nowhere, Jesus. There's nobody like you nowhere. There's nobody like you nowhere. Mm, and we worship your name this morning, God. And we thank you, God. We give you all the praise and all the glory. Because you deserve it, Father. Every worship, every praise that comes off of my lips, God, you deserve it. And so much more. I can have 10,000 tongues, God, and it still would not be enough, God. Oh, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. You've been my provider, Jesus. Has he been somebody's provider in this place? Come on. He's been my protector. He's been my rocker. He's been my fortress. He's been my shelter. He's been my everything, my everything, my everything. Hey. That's why I give you all the praise and all the glory, God, and all the honor. And I 
sing praises to your name. Praises to your name. The name that's so much higher than all names. And all to help me out and sing this part say be lifted up say be lifted up
lifted up to say, yeah, I've been lifted up. Last time and say, be lifted higher. We lift you up, Jesus. Be lifted up. Be lifted higher. Come on, this last time, say, we lift you up. We lift you up, say. We lift you up. We lift you high, you say. We lift you higher. All the worshipers in the building say. We lift you up. We lift you higher. With no music, say. We lift you up, say. Let's talk to the Father this morning and say we lift you higher. We, we lift, lift you higher. Come on, that's it, worship us, say. We lift you up. We lift you higher. We lift you higher, Jesus. Over our circumstances, God. Over our issues, God. We lift you up, Jesus. We lift you up. We lift you higher. We lift you up. We lift you higher. Say it more time say we lift you up Jesus we lift you up cause there's nobody like you Jesus we lift you high we, we lift you in this place if you thank the Lord in this place come on give him a good praise amen if you love Jesus come on and give him a glorious praise this morning come on and lift him up to the God that has brought you out of every situation to the God that woke you up this morning we lift you up Jesus we lift you up Jesus Jesus said, your dad. Nuh-uh. My dad doesn't let anybody eat any food until we pray for it. My dad prays for one minute every day. You know what? Our church has pancakes. This is what my sister and mom use for their blush. My dad says that mean kids never know what they're talking about. Because their parents don't know what they're talking about either. My dad says to punch meanies in the face. Then my mom says, don't ever do that. And my dad goes to time out. <laughs> 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 Come on, 
My dad's beard is itchy whenever he kisses me. My dad takes me to church so we could learn to be just like Jesus. My daddy prays for me. Then he makes me stop talking and go to bed. Then I get a flashlight and read my comic book. That's a sin. He's sinning. No, I'm not. Sinner. No, I'm not. R2. 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 My dad said that if you don't have anything nice to say, don't say it. My dad never stays mad at me. My dad taught me to forgive, because Jesus forgives us every time we ask. I want a mohawk. I wish I had hair. It's OK. Your hair will probably grow back. Thanks for being our dads for all our lives. All right. Happy Father's Day. City Church, come on, how about a big round of love for all the dads in the house today? Happy Father's Day, it's so good to have each and every one of you with us today. If you're a woman today, now is not the time to tune out, but rather to tune in. Because over the next few minutes, you're gonna learn some things about your husbands, about your sons, your dads, your significant others that are gonna confound and astound you. Men, we're gonna learn some things today about how to get the honor and respect you desire. You're gonna learn how to tap into God's unique design for your life. You'll understand better why you fight the battles that rage on the inside of you Today, as you receive from the Holy Spirit the octane to overcome, the courage to conquer, and the will to win as you become God's man. I wanna take a moment right now and just pray for all of us in this sacred moment. Lord, I pray in the name of Jesus that you would speak to every heart. Father, I thank you that you've ordained our steps. Lord, Every person listening right now is ordained of you to hear the word of the Lord. So transform us, O oh God, into what you desire in our life. And we thank you for that in Jesus' name, amen. You know, the fact is, the enemy wants nothing more than to take down and take out our men. Ladies, the enemy knows that if he can destroy your men, he doesn't have to destroy you. And so the target, the cross errors of hell are on men. Six times in the Old Testament, the war cry went out to kill every male in Israel. Six times from the enemy, the war cry went out to kill, to slay every male in Israel. Israel, men carry the seed. And if you can steal the seed, if you can crush the seed, if you can destroy the seed, you can enslave a nation. Prior to the birth of Moses, the Egyptians issued a decree to murder every Jewish boy, every Hebrew boy under the age of two. Everyone that was born. Why was Egypt doing that? To keep a nation enslaved. After the birth of Jesus, a decree went out from the palace of Herod to go into the city of Bethlehem with an armed brigade and to kill every male child under the age of two. Why did Satan do that? To keep us enslaved to sin in an effort to try to take Jesus, the only seed of the woman. But God showed up in the middle of the night, gave a dream to Joseph, and he took the family to Egypt to survive. You see, the enemy wants 
to massacre the masculine voice in our homes. Hell is after men. That's why more males die crib death than females. That's why more males die stillborn than females. Males are three times as likely to take their own lives as females. Men are in the cross errors of hell. But I came to talk to some women today. Maybe your man is kind of like Lazarus. Maybe he's spiritually dead and maybe there's some things about him that stinks a little bit. But I came to encourage you and to tell you that the same voice that called Lazarus out of the grave is able to make one call. And the masculine voice that has been buried in your house in your home, is able to come out and begin to take its rightful place and lead again in Jesus' name. I declare and decree that the men of City Church will rise and stand at their rightful place, the place that God has ordained for them to be in leadership, in anointing, in power, in purpose, and become all that God has for them to become. The male is the foundation of the human family. It's the foundation that supports everything else, that carries the weight of everything else. Genesis chapter one, verse 26. It says, then God said, let us, everybody shout us. Let us make man in our image to be like us. They will reign over the fish of the sea, the birds of the air, the livestock, all the wild animals of the earth, and the small animals that scurry along the ground. Who is us? This is the first recorded conversation of the Trinity. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. They're having a conference call about the creation of man. And in the midst of that, God says they will reign over. The King James word for that is dominion. They will have dominion over everything on the earth. Dominion is not something we use here in the West. It's not a word that we often leverage or uh, put out as a descriptive mechanism for something we're talking about. Um, But the word dominion, it it means to rule with the authority of the king. To rule with authority, the authority of the king. Men, God made you to have dominion, to rule with his authority, with the authority of the king. You see, the earth is a colony of heaven. And Just like British colonies, currently there are 14 British colonies. Just like with the British colonies, they act like the British, right? They drive on the opposite side of the road as we do. They have tea time. Why? They are honoring the king. Likewise, we here on earth are supposed to honor the king. We're supposed to fulfill His wishes, we're supposed to do life the way he desires us to do life. Um, The people that rule over those colonies, the word is they have dominion. In other words, they are there to fulfill the plan, the purpose of the king. Whatever the king wants, it is to be carried out under their authority. That's dominion. Men, God has given you dominion on this place called the earth, on this colony called the earth. Yet so often we abdicate that dominion to this or to that, to this realm or to this person or to this thing. We give it up. God wants his authority to be established through you on the earth as it is in heaven. God's given you authority over the earth to have dominion over the earth. That means that you have been sent to the earth with a mission. However, most men are not on mission. 
Most men are actually off mission. Well, today, before we leave, men, we're gonna co-mission you. We're gonna send you out with mission. We're gonna send you out with dominion, with purpose, with potential, with, with everything that God has in store for you. The reality is so very few men are on mission today. And I believe that God is gonna help us to line up our mandate and our mission, to line up what God has put on the inside of us with his plan and see that come to fruition. Genesis chapter two, verse number eight says this, the Lord God planted a garden in Eden in the east and there he placed man that he had made. Eden is very important to the male. The word Eden has five strokes in the Hebrew. It stands for spot, moment, presence, open door, delightful. When you put it all together, it stands for the spot on the earth that is an open door for heaven. Why did David not need a priest? Uh, Rather, why did Adam not need a priest? Why did Adam not need the law? Because he was under the spot where the open door of heaven was being poured out, the presence of God. We were made men to be in the presence of God. That's where God created us to be. If you take a fish out of water, it's gonna die. If you take a plant out of the soil, it's gonna die. If you take a man out of the presence of God, something in him begins to die. The king in him begins to die. The purpose in him begins to die. So we're gonna get back to that Eden spot, back to that place where we're walking in the presence of Almighty God. When men get into the presence of God, It can change the whole family, why? Because the male is the foundation of the family, the foundation of the home. When a man is on mission, when a man is in God's presence, it can put the entire family on a trajectory to God's best and God's blessing. That's why hell will fight tooth and nail to keep a man out of church. Because once a man gets aligned with his mission and his mandate. And once he gets under the window, that open door for heaven's presence being poured out on his life, he can have the authority of God in the earth as it is in heaven. That's the plan of God for men. Man was designed to have dominion, to carry out the order of the king, to to represent the wishes of the king on the earth. Man, it all goes back to us walking in Eden, the spot on the earth that is an open door to the presence of God. So the second thing God gave man was work. The first place God put him was in his presence. The second thing God gave him was work. Fulfilling your purpose, men, is essential for being a man. It is inseparable to who you are. That's why when one man meets another man, the first thing they say is, well, what do you do? This is what I do. What do you do? Oh, this is what I do. With women, it's often more, who do you know? Oh, I know Karen from so-and-so. Yeah, 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 I know know, know, know." But with men, what do you do? Why? Because our purpose is inseparable from our personality. The first place God put man was in his presence. The first thing God gave man was work, work. Now there can be a difference between your work and your job. It is possible to have a job that's not your work. Jobs can change. You can lose a job, but you can't lose your gift. You can lose a job, but you can't lose your work. You can't lose what God has put you on this earth to do. Things can change vocationally. But when the Lord puts a gift on you, when the Lord puts a purpose on you, when the Lord puts a plan on you, that cannot be changed. Even the word says, 
that the gifts of God are without repentance. And so, yes, your, your work and your job can be the same, but they're not always the same. Men, let me ask you, what are you becoming? What are you becoming? God's word for you today is become. Become all that God has intended for you to become. Are you living in God's presence? Are you executing the wishes, the plans, the desires of the king on the earth? Are you running your life on this colony the way the king wants you to run it? You know, when you're looking at an apple seed, if all you see is a seed, then you're missing out on the understanding and the purpose of becoming. But if when you see a seed, you see a tree that can produce more seed. And when you look at an apple seed, if you see an orchard, then you're beginning to understand what God had in mind when he said over you, become. Because God has already given you everything you need to become. God is, you know, here's the amazing thing about a seed. They're amazing. You know, you can buy them. They can sit on the shelf for years. In fact, recently, you've heard me talk about it. There is a date palm tree in Israel that is, two, the, the seed was 2,000 years old. There's a protective shell on that seed. They found it in the cave. They planted it and it grew. 2,000 years later. Why? There, there's protection over that seed. Inside of that protection, there's two more things. There's power and there's potential. So the seed has protection until just the right time. Yet some of you may think that your time is over. <laughs> you may think it's too late for you. You may think that God can't use you anymore. You may think that if there's no way that God can use you at this stage in your life. I want you to know there is protection over your potential until just the right time. The second thing we find in the seed is power. The seed has all the power it needs to break out of that shell once it's planted in the soil. As soon as you take a seed that's been dormant and you put it in the soil, it begins to, something that's inside that has been inactive becomes active. There's power in there. There's power on the inside. And as soon as it goes into that soil, it begins to say, oh, this is what I was made to do. This is what I was purposed to do. This is what I was planned to do. Somebody tried to keep me on the shelf for years, but the time is now, and I'm gonna fulfill the purpose that God has for my life. So there's power in the seed, and then there's potential in the seed. The seed is not just an apple, it's not just an apple tree, it is an apple orchard. You will become everything that God purposed for you to become. You will accomplish everything that God purposed for you to accomplish. Regardless of the enemy's plans, regardless of his lies, regardless of what your daddy said or your mama said or your cousin said, you will become everything God said for you to become. There's protection, there's power, and there's potential on the inside of you. You know, the greatest temptation that I see attacking men today it's not greed, as you might think. It's not lust, as you might think. It's actually the proclivity for passiveness. Being passive towards God. Being passive toward our family. Being passive toward what God has put in us. Being passive toward the potential that God has placed on the inside of you. Passiveness can steal your purpose. If you're not careful, passiveness can steal your purpose. Now, if you left here today and you went to a restaurant and you looked out the window and somebody was breaking your car window, 
I happen to believe you wouldn't just sit there and go, oh, not this again. Well, you know, they're gonna take what they're gonna take, you know? What do you do? You wouldn't be passive about that. No, you, you guys, I know some of y'all, y'all would get up, go outside, be yelling things about their mama. It would get rough, I mean. Y'all have to tell them that you don't go to city church. You go to a different church after you get through with them, amen. You would never let someone just passively, you would never passively let someone take your car. Yet so often we let time steal our purpose. So often we let difficulties steal our purpose. We let what somebody said that doesn't have anything to do with us steal our purpose. God is wanting to eradicate passiveness and to stir up the passion because you were placed here, men, to have dominion. You were placed here to have authority. You were placed here to accomplish the wishes and the desires of the king. Let it be on earth as it is in heaven. Don't let anything steal what God has placed on the inside of you. So finally, don't just go to work. Go to work on your work. Go to work on your gift. Don't, don't just do work. Go to work on your work. Commit to give to God everything that you are doing. Eradicate passivity from your life and say, if I'm gonna do something, I'm gonna become the best at this. There's nobody, you, you can look hard and you can look far. I'm going to become the best at this because God has placed me here to have dominion. He's placed me here to have authority, to represent the kingdom of God on the earth. So go to work on your work. You know, David became a skilled psalmist and a skilled warrior long before anybody wanted to have dinner with him. Even to the extent to where when the prophet came and told his dad, call all your boys, he called everybody but David. But you know what David was doing? David was becoming a skilled and anointed psalmist in the background. He did not let passivity get a hold of his life. He was becoming a skilled protector. Yeah, sure, it started out with his dad's sheep, but it ended up being the sheep of the nation of Israel. One day the king was looking for somebody to come and play anointed music in the palace. And somebody said, you know, the other day I was down in Bethlehem and I, I, I saw this kid playing his lyre. You should get him. And all of a sudden David was walking into the palace with his little lyre going, how did I get here? You know how? He dismissed passivity and said, God, I'm gonna reign in everything you've called me to reign. I'm gonna have dominion. I'm gonna become the best guitarist, the best psalmist. I'm gonna become the best slingshotter until one day his slingshot took down the heavyweight champion of the world. You see, he was working on his work. He was developing what God gave him. He was fostering potential in his life. And that's what we need to do. Vision is simply purpose with pictures. And that's what God wants to give you. Sometimes God will just give you a picture. You've gotta run with that picture. You've gotta embrace that picture. Vision is purpose with pictures. Proverbs chapter 19, verse 21 says this. You can make many plans, but the Lord's purpose will prevail. I'm saying today, Lord, I want your kingdom to come in my life. I want your kingdom to come in our men's life. I want us to represent the kingdom of heaven on the earth. I want his wishes to be carried out. I want his plans to be leveraged through and in my life. Look, you were not born in order to discover your purpose. You were born with purpose. You were born, God already placed on the inside of you the power, the potential, the protection, everything that is needed. 
God-given vision is the source of confidence. God-given vision is the source of confidence. It's gonna give you the octane to overcome. Men, it's gonna give you the fuel to finish, the fortitude to fight, and the faith to forge ahead. I want you to stand with me all across this place. We're gonna do something a little bit different today. I want to anoint all the men in the house. And so during this song of worship, I want men, I want you to come forward. Once everybody's forward, I'm gonna go around and I'm gonna anoint. I'm gonna send you out today with a mission, co-mission. You're gonna fulfill God's plan, God's purpose, God's potential for your life. And God is gonna use what you do and who you are in an incredible way. Come on, let's worship the Lord together. Awesome God and mighty King, we lift our eyes and suffering, and nothing can or ever will come between the love we share. We set our eyes upon the beauty of your face, O oh Lord and Father, your glory. Awesome God said. Awesome God and mighty King, we make our lives an offering. On this day we make a pact to live for you and not turn back. We set our eyes upon. Your 
just sing it one more time. Say, say, Father, you're glory. Forever you are, forever you are faithful, forever you are true, forever you are mighty as yes, you are, forever it is you. Come on and see it. Forever you are faithful, forever you are true, forever you are mighty. Father, you glory us. Your name is wonderful. And I will stand in awe of you forever. What a beautiful name it is, what a beautiful name it is, the name of Jesus Christ our King. What a beautiful name it is, nothing can stand against, what a beautiful name it is, the name of Jesus. What a beautiful name it is, the name of Jesus. What a beautiful name it is, the name of Jesus. What a beautiful name it is, the name of Jesus. What a beautiful name it is, what a beautiful name it is. The name of Jesus Christ, the King. Come on, help me sing. What a beautiful name it is. Nothing compared to this. What a beautiful name it is. The name of Jesus. Say, you have no rival. Say, you have. Hello and welcome back. Thank you all for joining us today. What a powerful word this morning on this Father's Day that each and every one of us can take away. And for those who are fathers, who are, uh, God has placed us all in a, a position of power and authority over the enemy and the enemy chooses to silence you. But I declare and decree today from the word of God that you are, have that power and authority over anything. We don't want to stand in complacency. We don't want to fall back into allowing time to go by and we're not using uh, the gifts, the abilities that God has placed in us because in and through that is our destiny. So I want us to uh, remember that. 
And for those who have come and it's your first time, welcome. We are so glad to have you. For those who are joining again, just remember, your City Church family extended and God has placed you in the right place today. And as we move forth, if it's your first time, then we'd like to invite you. You can get to know us. We can get to know you. And what you need to do for us is to text the word city vip to the number 94000 that's city vip to the number 94000 and then we'll be able to send you information uh, about our ministry about the things that we're doing here about our, our our staff and our beliefs so be able to do that and we look forward to that for those of you who are continuing to join us, we are truly grateful to each and every one of you for having already partnered with us because City Church is not just here in Cordova, but all over the world. And it is because of you, because of each and every one of you uh, pouring in, planting seeds so that the word can follow uh, the Great Commission, that the word go forth throughout the world. And so if you're wanting to partner, find out more about that be able to join in so that we can continue to have the gospel to go and be carried by the missionaries and those who are, are taking the word into those areas that are uh, uh, some of them are not able to openly share the word but they're able to to do that and be our feet and our hands and God's hands extended so uh, for that here's ways that you can do that you can go to your app store, look for City Church in Cordova, and then um, look for um, the guided, be guided to give securely there. Secondly, you can go online to our website at citychurch.live. Click on the giving tab and you'll be given instructions. Thirdly, you can text the word city to the number 888-364-4483 and follow the instructions. Then lastly, you can mail a check made out to City Church. And our address is 8200 Macon Road here in Cordova, Tennessee, 38018. As always, on behalf of Dr. Foster and the City Church family, we are blessed to have you share with us. We pray that the Lord will continue to keep this word on your heart, let it dwell richly with you, and be blessed in your week.